what are, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, don't worry, there's bridges around here. But I don't <laughs> see one where you're going at a very fast speed. She looks over her shoulder, taking her eyes off the road for a second, and goggles still on her face. Do you trust me? I don't know. <laughs> Good. Okay. And just like picks up the pace, legs now, digging it even harder as the, the those of you who are falling behind more dirt and clods being thrown up. You can see the the rough elements of, of of scattered brush and dry plant life that cause the area home are being knocked and pulled out of the ground. Roots flying as the, there's a heavy clattering sound. And you watch as the impact causes the bridge ahead to just ripple with the sudden addition of your two-part caravan onto the space, and it droops down over the ravine like a long-drawn cloth as you begin to kind of head downward at an odd angle towards this bridge, which you can see just seems to almost infinitely curl up into the opposite side of the ravine where it seems to attach on the opposite side. I throw end. up in my mouth a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, those ripples, they come back too. I start getting a little. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm on another car. <laughs> Andre was just like clutching one of the pieces of metal with his eyes closed, going. <laughs> um, as the opposite side of the bridge begins to come back from the impact. Oh, no. And then. <laughs> it hits yeah. and you be- like leave the bridge for a second. She quickly like, oh shit! Turns around and grabs it. Do the legs automatically do like a ski jump pose when they hit air? Yeah, they do. They fall like. <laughs> <laughs> they gleam the fuck out of that cube. Say, or I'm riding MCG, she sort of kicks his wheel up to the side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then just goes, oh, my tailbone! Oh. <laughs> Under this for some Christ air points. <laughs> Their skin looks like it's, it's deeply sand, possibly sun scarred, uh, like my forehead, uh, a little darker. Um, but uh, it has. Uh, <sighs> what happened? <laughs> it, since our honeymoon had never mooned, it went away. Went away. Uh, <laughs> oh, your personal thing. I don't know why I said it, but it did. Uh, we just tossed this out here. Man. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> you you have to wear it the tail. Yeah. I do. Let's all just go around and say one weird thing about themselves. Your body. Yeah, I have butt problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated with my pores. <laughs> uh, really, really warm in the back of my neck suddenly. Uh, it's got a real gun on it. Like a wow, real nice. gun. <laughs> oh man. Pretty sure it's plastic. It's but I'm try to aim, just point my hand straight up to where I'm pointing at him. Mm-hmm. My eyes are going to flare white, hair flies up in the air, and I'm going to lightning bolt. Shit, okay. Straight up through the gun yeah. into him. Through the scope. This angry torrent of like white, kind of lavender purple lightning that just streaks upward, blasting out into the sky above. Yeah, and this ignites any flammable objects oh, no. in its path that isn't being worn oh, or no. carried. Did it do anything charges? to the yeah to the black powder? Did it shoot all the bullets at us? Um. Hmm. <laughs> Ballistics. How did they yeah, work? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they explode. They will fire at whatever they're pointing at. Yeah. There's got to be someone. Nice someone's... flammable objects. Okay. Before you point, that. But I'm also, right in front of it. Inside. A thing. I know. They're, they're in caps, so they can kind of go wherever. Okay. Like, I'll say. Just, I'll, it's I'll, shrapnel. <laughs> or two, so. so here's the thing. <laughs> there are right now 237 charges loaded into this. Oh, 237 bullets. Oh wow. Oh god. I'm gonna say the ones that are that are that are surface struck by this go off. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that at about 60. Oh god. That's 60 shots that all at once out of the front of this gun. Uh, it is aimed loosely in the direction of the front of this vehicle. <laughs> Arcs in a... You get shot. He the party. Okay, so I'm just rolling damage on it here. Kyle, bring in the squibs. Rocks being shot up in the air from each of these impacts. You all take a number of hits, dodge a bunch of them, and in a brief moment, there's that pause of like, what the fuck just happened? 
<laughs> the front of the uh, Katria special Katria. bursts and fans open and currently is non functional. Yeah. Yeah. Good, oh, good job. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that's your, that's your action. Uh huh. Bonus action. Bonus action. I shoot everybody in the face. <laughs> Nobody's within thirty feet of me, right? I mean, just your friends. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So you take only ten points of acid damage, and you do not take additional damage going forward. You're microdosing the That's acid. That's great. That's great. <laughs> uh, what? Sorry. Imogen. Imogen, what the fuck? So now you're making me do it. Now you're in my head. Now you're in my head. It's all right, it's, it's dangerous right now, so we're all a little. A little it's, bit on it's edge. Fine. Brennan, it's fine. Just keep going. <laughs> Touche. Uh, I will also cure cure wounds. Her. Um, wait, do I have? Do you have that prepared? I don't think I do. Wait, that can't be right. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a you're a healer right there. without a cure I wounds have, prepared? I have healing word. What? I always have yeah. something. Uh, I'll do healing word, I guess, on her um, instead. Thanks. <laughs> At that second level. Going off of what Travis was saying, a uh, bullet kind of grazed <laughs> Laudna's face, and so my, like, my mouth is kind of like torn open, and you can see like exposed teeth oh, and gum, oh, and gum, oh, and oh, I just like feel that, and I grab into it with my fingers, oh, and I rip even oh, further, oh, and start oh. dislocating my jaw as I take on take form of dread. Oh, that is shit. so cool. I love it. And then I'm going to take the like sinew and ichor dripping from my mouth and do an Eldritch Blast! Awesome. I'm flipping around, uh, running up to FCG, pulling out a pulling out a, a, a healing potion bottle. I'm going to I'm gonna just unhinge the jaw and throw it in there like a <laughs> softball. The glass, the glass <laughs> shatters, shatters on the inside. <laughs> you are filled with healing potion and glass shards. Uh, 2d4 plus two, right? Yep. I'm gonna do some scorching rays on the big boy up top. So, All three 66 hit? fire oh. damage to okay. the uh, oh, gunner. Ooh. Come on, fire druid. <laughs> You're just adding two sixes as you go. <laughs> it's so cute. It's just a little bit of garlic. It's seasoning. Powder, a, little, yeah. <laughs> a little more nutmeg. A little more nutmeg. A little more nutmeg. Um, 19 points of damage. 19 points of damage. Up, and I'll just say. I'm gonna take your stuff now. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna attempt to slide a pan while she's walking past me. That's my that's my reaction. <laughs> yeah. uh, just just for fun. Uh, Twenty two. Twenty-two does beat your passive perception. Wait, what am I doing? What's happening? I just picked picking my pocket. Picking my pocket. Are you picking my pocket? You were doing your. I just took a little. Your, how do you want to do this? You can, you you can pocket. Pocket. <laughs> ignore it. Ignore me. Ignore me. Ignore me. Carry on. We'll come to it later. Come to it later. Come to it later. Okay. I'm gonna run over to Birdie. That went really and well. Cast cure wounds. I should have saved the slide of pan for now. I'm so sorry. It was like, yeah, that was. Do post. not be that sorry. I'm here. Okay. Would you? Um, Ashton, you pulled. You stole. You should give them too. A porcelain blue. Thimble. Gotcha. That's for a giant. It's a very big thimble. Oh wow! <laughs> it's kind of like a little teacup. Okay. Uh, porcelain <laughs> blue giant thimble. He did a lot of cross stitching. <laughs> no judgment. Does Ira handle the purple stones at all, like with touch? Yeah, well, he's the one who brought them here. Oh, oh he can oh, handle the balls. Um, he handles right. balls. <laughs> You hear in your head as we're walking into the laboratory. Seriously, Chet, don't touch the rocks. <laughs> I know that's what you want to do. That is not true. That is not true in my head, right? It's a little true, but <laughs> I, I'm not going to touch the rocks. I just don't trust anybody right now. Mm. All right. But get in your head. I, could, I bet I could just touch it real fast. You could probably just touch it real fast. Don't take the rock. Thank you for the permission. Oh my god! Oh no! That might have been the 
the choice the choice of mug makes it even better. Seven years. I just felt some like scratching, and I was like, "It's a creature." But it was a cop. It's Ira. It's Ira. It's Ira. Thank you. Alex Ward. Alex Ward. <laughs> I don't know what I thought was gonna did kill me in this moment. Did you right request now? that cup? No, I think they saw that I removed oh, I the K N off these reasons. They oh, were yeah. just oh, thinking of me. That was very so nice. Sweet. So sweet. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get away. <laughs> All right. She goes ahead to gather, gather, gather a broom and whatever materials she could find as you all begin to color you know, your path from where you once came. And scanning the horizon <laughs> and keeping half an eye on Birdie. What does that mean? Yes, Birdie mentioned. Oh, is Birdie here? Did she come back with you? No, I left her out in the desert. Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> There's a fellow scripture that came by and it was, Kill or be killed! You sure it's like a bot. Yeah, it's just common survival, I'm sorry. It's about you'll, the sign that, that Birdie comes in with a... <laughs> no, no continuous theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find the networks of folks we can trust, and if we have a chance, stop it. Concerned. I, I think I believe you, sir, about your intentions. Um, great. <laughs> Why are there keys so. on that? You don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen your tanker in like five months. Not to no, just five. <laughs> see an elven man, a shaggy dark brown hair, kind of suntan skin, a fair layer of soot kind of smeared and dust placed upon the exterior of his kind of linen outfit and clothes. He has a satchel of tools to one side, uh, who's kind of looking up at it for a second, kind of glances back as he hears footsteps and looks at it. Uh, so, oh my god. Hi. Fern, Fern, and runs up and like just Brings you in this big bear hug, and you can see like he's about a good foot shorter than Fern. Um, this this man of, of, of fine fey elven features, uh, a bit sallow in the face, um, but you know, kind of an, a, a rugged handsomeness to him. Uh, his eyes have almost a golden sheen to their coloration when it pokes through the bit of like shaggy hair that's in the middle of his face. Um, but as he kind of just holds you in, and he's. You can you can manhandle him <laughs> if you really want to. Although not with your strength, maybe. I but. just I pick him up, <laughs> just oh. the biggest. <laughs> oh, love, love! It's been so long. I'm so much taller than you. She comes to herself. She's kind of a collector of sorts. She um, she plays guardian to one of her own fanes, place of power, and she does favors for those who ask in exchange for things to add to her collection. Completely outside the court. Hey, shoots what you would call um, crone, hag, oh. all sorts of other types in that realm. Take variations of that, but she has no coven. She's a she's a strange one in her own right. Don't know how old she's been. She's always been around. Always been alive. And y'all thought she would be great to take care of your daughter. Well, she's wonderful. It okay. well, seemed to work out okay for the most part. I mean, it could have been worse choices. Trust me. So, like points up towards Ira. Sure. And I have a question. So, in order for Mori to do favors, you have to give her something. Eh? Hmm. Huh. Was I something that you gave for a favor? No, we just. We did. And he looks over his shoulder up towards Ira, who's in the process of installing the weave lens. You can see him kind of clutching the green circle of glass off to one side as he's like pulling aside bits and beginning to install it. And you see Ollie's face just go pale. Looks over at Birdie. And she like sits down in a chair. Oh, 
this adds a bit of a... a wrinkle to the story. I don't... I'm... What? And Birdie kind of looks up. Fern, there, we didn't... Uh, uh, there wasn't like an, an exchange. I, we, Ira, you said that you said that she would make this for us, right? Right? And you hear in the back the voice go, "Ah, and with that, it's done." In the center of the room, however, you immediately take notice of a climbing, massive, thirty-foot-tall telescope-like construct of metal, stone, and all manner of strange cables and runes and dozens of crystalline spheres of varying sizes mounted in numerous places along its impressive size, each casting a dull blue light in its vicinity throughout the otherwise rather shaded chamber. It's a little lens of some sort, so I guess. Oh, right, right. I remember I was talking about that. This is indeed what I requested from Morrigan. Quite happy with what she was able to achieve. What does it do? Well, um, it tends, at least from what was requested of its creation, it was supposed to be uh, something that can reveal the true nature of uh, enchantment and weave of, of magic and devices and such, um, but on a grand scale, as we're looking towards grand things with this device. This here, I refer to as the Veil scatter scope. It's a unique cross section of some of my previous work in espionage. It should enable, does to an extent now, a view of places awfully only visible through scrying means, and yet pierces even the most powerful protections from such defensive magics, should they be directly in the sight of the device. Well, it's like being pushed in front of a pile of intentional garbage, like someone had just mashed a bunch of trash together, but but everything is meticulously placed. He reaches over and grabs part of the device and leads it down, and it almost has like a like a, a mask or some sort of a, a place about the size of a head. And he pulls it to your face, and it does kind of like press onto it. And it's a, it's a bit large for, for the shape of your head, but as it does, you immediately, kind of looking forward, you kind of blink for a second, and your vision is just of a blue sky, but this, but the dark, similar to the to the shade that you've seen above you and Basaris, but it's a bit shaded, a bit darker and blue. As the top of this telescope-like device shifts, means <laughs> pushing out into the opening and above the mesa. And as it expands, you begin to think, well, telescopes generally don't work during the day. As it pushes beyond, you can see there are hinges at certain points in the telescope. Like, as the light begins to hit it, you can see these larger points of articulation along its length. And as it begins to push further and further out, he begins to pull other dials, and you hear the metal creak as it begins to bend, like it can angle the direction it's going. As opposed to just going straight out, it begins to almost curl and shift, like a, like a, oh, a wow. functional periscope. So not angle, but actual. Oh. That's creepy, that's fucking creepy. And as it begins to like turn and retract in certain directions, you now can see like your vision being shifted around, and you can you are looking at the mesa around you, and you're kind of just given a, a peripheral view of it. And as you're glancing, he goes and changes something else. He goes, now comes the real fun. And he hits one dial and turns it, and a lens clips over, and as it does, the blue goes to like a deep, deep cerulean navy blue. And you can just barely see the, the horizon at this point. It looks like twilight in the middle of the Hellcatch. You can just see kind of the base outline of the surrounding mesa. But what you do see it looks almost like an Ouroborealis glow in the sky beyond you. This long, kind of drifting, it's like a, like a, a river of faint light it's just kind of drifting in the sky above. This is one of the ley lines that is drifting across Marquette. Oh, fuck. And this sh shifts the other side, oh. and you see two distant ones that are kind of like, yeah. kind of shifting in space near each other. You can, it, it's it's ever so faint, and then it clicks in closer. You hear with each click, it, your vision like jumps ten miles, ten miles. It like is pushing extended distances, straight up, and then it clicks the lens again, and there you can see 
beyond the edge of the mountains that go outside of the Hellcatch Valley and beyond a gentle series of threads, like three more of these ley lines that are kind of woven together to a nexus point that's kind of drifting over some sort of a dark jungle. And you watch as the whole thing kind of bends upward out of sight and your vision shifts rapidly into darkness until you see a small, red, spherical object. The red moon of Ruiz in the center of your vision. You focus in and you can see, in a moment of clarity, the texture of the red moon. Uh, you can It looks almost like it's swirling clouds of red. Like, like like someone had thrown glitter in a pool of blood and just let it swirl. Cool. And it's just it's slowly, the texture shifting. And the more you try and focus, the more your brain blurs over. The more like you start, it almost feels like drowsiness, but but not. It's almost like you you start losing focus and your thoughts begin to wander once you begin to focus too hard on it. There are many things we could see with this, but now that you've brought this to us. We're, we're hoping to figure out the nature of what's keeping one, what's keeping us from finding out its nature so we can try and prevent whatever it's trying to do. That's not just, I mean, there's some, I, I, I get the feeling there's something malevolent either around it, based around it, within it. I don't trust it. And the glass where it sits where the, the mask that puts over your face that's dark suddenly gets a layer of dull green light across it. Does this give you a headache, Ara? Every time. Were you building the telescope the first time? What? What? No. no. <laughs> Am I understanding you correctly, Chet? Well, look. When people have holes in their story, it usually means they're just leaving out the most important parts. No offense, Ollie, but I mean, you see the Unseelie Quartz building a machine that looks like this, but you don't know what it did. So you ran up and you stole this shiny piece right out of the middle of it, and then came over here and built the same thing. We didn't build the same thing. Hmm. What was the Unseelie Court building? I don't know. Who does? Probably those who were there meeting with them. How do you know you're not building the same thing? If you don't know what it was. Then why do they want the crown back so bad? Ira, what are we building? And Ira's still there just holding Imogen. Kind of slightly gently pushes her face into the mass. As you glance through, the light, you see before you the green sheen across what is almost a, a dark universal sky, speckled with stars. And there in the center is the slightly muddied red of Ruidus, the familiar sight, both in your dreams and previous viewing through a telescopic-like device. But there's something you've never seen before around it. There is a shape that encompasses it, clear as day, like a, like a field of energy, like something that encapsulates it. Not unlike some of the magical force fields and such that you've learned to generate and create, but it completely encases it, and it has a texture a texture like a lattice weave, like an extremely powerful gathering of different magical threads that create this textured fence-like weave that just seals it off. Does it entirely. look like the like a ley lines all the way around it, or or does it look more like mm -hmm. a cage? It looks more like a cage. It's the best way I can describe it. Um, and it doesn't look quite like ley line energy. Oh, it looks yeah. like the strong, strong, distinct. Unlike something you've seen before. There's something being kept up there. It's a prison. What do you see? Tell me. 
I see a god that can't get out. Am I right? It's the first time hearing of it. An imprisoned god, you say? Interesting. Kind of peeks up past your head to over towards Ollie and Bertie and Hondir. And they all kind of look fearful and taken aback by it. Focused on this, it's still a fresh sight. The sense of a headache that was mentioned before by Ladna never takes root. And you swear, you swear there's something you're missing here. Orm. <laughs> why, why are you so bad at using telescopes? I don't know. It's because my glasses are always bumping. Oh, that's what it is. That's telescope. right. I pat FCG. Want to help me out? I'll pat you back and give you guidance. Thank you. And I clutch the shield, and like always, I, I can just feel it, it slightly vibrate and just the vision sharpen. Natural 20. Oh! Plus one, so 21 plus 27. You needed a 28. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the Ruidus die, too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. You click in, and you're trying desperately to ignore the feeling of Ira's fingers kind of like wrapped around your shoulder as he sets you into the machine. I'm one fifth the size of that hand. Yeah. Um, glancing in, he adjusts some of the elements. Does that help? Tell us what you see. And as you focus in, you see the same lattice shape. You can blink a bit. While the nature of this lattice-like field that contains the red moon evades you, your eyes catch a glint in the middle of the red storm. As like the device is scanning past the front of it. And it's moving away from it. As Iris still like turning the device and it's kind of like scanning past Wait, it. Stop. clicks in a few more places and it gets in a little bit closer and pushes and you can see it straining. There's like the energies of all the orbs around it. You can see, for those of you who aren't in the device, they're now bright. And there is a vibrant hum in the chamber as it is drawing all the energy from these various orbs that have been collected and embedded within this machine. It's taking a lot of power to do what it's doing. Now you've seen a few storms in your time. Red clouds swirling angrily, aggressively, hungrily in your dreams, moving and consuming. Behind them, nothing but dust and shadow. As this device pushes past the layer of lattice, cage-like energy pushing beyond the boundaries of your vision, the storm clearer than it's ever been see it part for but a moment. And there's a city. And that's where we're in tonight's Oh, oh you can't do that! You can't do that! You can't do that! What do you mean? Oh, oh you sick. Oh. What? 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 What is it? What? What is it? Something just, I don't Quick. want to say it. I don't want to say it. Yeah. What? Maybe when the cameras go off. Mm, yeah. I have an idea. I have an idea. Wait, I have an idea. what do you mean when the, when the cameras go off? This is what this was. No, I know. Well, I do in cases. No, I'm not even going to tell anybody. It, I'm it, not even going to. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. Save it. Save it. Save it. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I'm excited to hear. Well, it's not that heart. exciting, but. The moon is a god wrong. prison. Someone We're going to the moon. Jeez, my god.